Governor Stitt signs a bill banning city taxes on plastic bags. Officials name the group involved with the Sri Lankan bombings and the aftermath of the devastating earthquake that hit the Philippines. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Tori King. And I'm Storm Jones. Hours ago, Governor Kevin Stead signed a bill that prohibits cities and towns from banning or imposing taxes or fees on single-use plastic or paper bags. The bill began moving through the legislature uh, after Norman officials considered a five-cent fee on bags in an effort to limit litter and pollution. Now Tatum Wilson joins us with the details on the new law and more in Politics Tuesday. Tatum. The measure specifically prohibits cities and towns from imposing the fees on, quote, auxiliary containers, which include the bags commonly used in grocery stores. It also applies to things like cups, bottles, and packages made of p paper, plastic, and glass. Opponents of the bill include Norman Mayor-elect Bria Clark, who calls this bill an example of government overreach. We should have the opportunity to try it out. That is an issue of local control, and we have the right to do what's best to protect our public health and our environment. We're not forcing the rest of the state to do it, which is funny because that has been one of their arguments that uniformity is required. Well, I want to challenge the state legislature. If you want uniformity and you're concerned about double taxation, then ban the bags statewide. Proponents also in, uh, could include retailers and container manufacturers who say municipal bag ordinances would reduce consumer choice and increase the cost of groceries. And today, the Oklahoma Supreme Court struck down a law that caps damages for pain and suffering for people seeking compensation in personal injury lawsuits. The cap was signed into law by Governor Mary Fallon in 2011. It limits non-economic damages in personal injury lawsuits to $350,000. The law applies to those in situations such as on-the-job injuries. The decision involved a lawsuit by an oil field worker whose left arm was amputated after an accident. A jury awarded the worker $6 million for pain and suffering, but that was reduced to $700,000 by the cap. The state's highest court ruled such a statute is unconstitutional and treats people who survive injuries different than those who don't. And Scott Pruitt has registered as a coal lobbyist in Indiana. This comes about nine months after the former Oklahoma Attorney General resigned as the leader of the Environmental Protection Agency. He enters Indiana politics in the midst of a major legal battle over retiring coal plants. Pruitt resigned from the EPA in 2018 after ethics scandals involving the misuse of money and staffers. His conduct led to over a dozen federal investigations. Storm, back to you at the desk. All right, thank you, Tatum. Oklahoma's congressional delegation is back in the state on a two-week recess from Congress. Last week, I spent a day with Congressman Kevin Hearn in Tulsa and found out being away from Washington doesn't mean the work of representing Oklahomans slows down. The days can be long. Uh, we started out about 7.30 and it's now approaching 6.30, so a good strong 11-hour day. The topics change by the minute from economics. It's about the economy, stupid. To defense. With the whole issue of the, of the Space Force and how that's going to be funded. And the media. The liberal press will, will play onto the ignorance of the American population. The meals can be quick, but that's something Congressman Kevin Hearn is used to. He became a millionaire by age 40 through franchising McDonald's restaurants. I would say it's a huge bureaucracy in of itself. 15,000 restaurants, 3,500 franchisees from every coast, every town in America. There's nothing more grassroots than a McDonald's. But there was a time growing up when the congressman's mother and stepfather couldn't afford food for their own family. In ninth grade, I took over the payment for the family truck because it was going to get repossessed. And, and so these things changed my mindset that the way out of poverty was work, work, work. And of course, a day in the life of any politician isn't complete without a lot of pressing the flesh. Hey, how you doing? Kevin Hearn. Yeah, doing? Kevin Hearn, I'm the United States Congressman here in the 1st District. Kevin Hearn, I'm the Congressman here in the 1st District. Good to see you all. Good Hearn good tells me all. he has met all of his campaign promises from 2018 and has already started his reelection bid for 2020. And I thought it was going to be rainy all day, but it kind of looks like it's starting to clear up, Storm. Yeah, Trey Bell is here to let us know if we're in the clear or if we should expect some more rain later today. Trey? 
Guys, it's mostly cloudy outside. It's a little cool as well. However, when the sun peeks through the clouds, you can for sure feel that humidity. Now, looking at temperatures across the state, it's much cooler in northwestern Oklahoma. They're sitting in the 50s, as whereas in southeastern Oklahoma, they're much warmer in the 70s. Now, notice that stationary front, that blue and red positioned pretty much across uh, or along I-44 in Oklahoma, just to our southeast. That's going to play a critical role in what type of weather uh, some Oklahomans see tonight and in tomorrow. Some, for some Oklahomans, the weather is going to get a lot more eventful later this evening. So looking at weather headlines moving forward, it's cloudy and cool for the remainder of this evening, though for some of us, we will see some scattered storms tonight and tomorrow morning, but a slow warm up is beginning tomorrow. I'll have information on that, plus more in Maine weather. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, we'll be looking for that. Thank you, Trey. Three people in Mays County are in custody tonight after a nine-year-old Salina girl was starved, beaten, and handcuffed in her own home. The girl had been reported missing on April 5th and was found later by a deputy nearby. When found, she was bruised, swollen, and covered in feces. The girl refused to go back to home and uh, to her guardians, Joel, Allison, and Amanda Smith. All three are in custody in Missouri. But authorities say they will be extradited to Mays County and charged with felony child neglect and abuse. And tired of waiting on trains? OU Knightley's Jordan Overton tells us why you're stuck at the intersection with no train in sight and what changes could impact your daily commute. We've all heard it. You're on your way to your destination after all your careful planning and then... Now you're late to your destination once again thanks to trains. Changes could be coming to the way railroads operate though. If the Oklahoma legislature can pass what's being called the railroad bill, railroad companies would be fined if they are stopped at a crossing for more than 10 minutes. Why are we waiting so long? It's because of railroad crossings like the one behind me. Railroad crossings operate by electrical circuits within the track. Sometimes malfunctions can occur. Trains can also stop on tracks due to various safety reasons. BNSF, the main operator for trains in the area, told me the reason that trains sometimes slow down or stop is due to Norman being located near a siding. Sidings are historically located near population centers, which have grown over the years. The bill has passed the House of Representatives and now heads to the Oklahoma State Senate for a full vote. If the measure passes the Senate, it then heads to Governor Stitt's desk for a signature. If the governor decides to sign this bill, it will go into effect on November 1st of later this year. For now though, commuters may have to wait a few extra minutes for a train like this to go by. Jordan Overton, OU Nightly. And this is different than a previous resolution regarding train horns, which did pass for Norman city limits only. The railroad bill will be statewide. And a cash-strapped medical helicopter company shuts down four air bases across the state. Air Methods Corporation says Metaflight bases in Chickasha, Seminole, Keefton, and a base at Riverside Airport in South Tulsa have all been closed. The company says it will continue to provide some limited services to the areas. However, most patients will have to find other options. The closure affects about 15 employees. And coming up on OU Nightly, another devastating earthquake hits Southeast Asia. A state of calamity is declared in the Philippines. Up next, devastating images out of that country. Plus, a highly debated question for the Supreme Court on citizenship. We'll tell you more about it when OU Nightly returns. A group has claimed responsibility for the Easter bombings in Sri Lanka. Talon Forbes has more in the News Center. Talon? Thanks, Tori. An ISIS-affiliated news agency shared a video taking responsibility for the Sri Lanka bombings. In the weeks prior to the bombings, India's intelligence services gained information from an ISIS suspect on one of the men in the video. Zoran Hashim was identified as one of the alleged attackers. In the video, all of the men have on masks, is masks except for Hashim. The news agency referred to Hashim as the one who was leading them and stated the attackers are fighters of the Islamic State. Sri Lanka Prime Minister admitted the bombings could have been prevented if intelligence had been properly shared. 
Another earthquake hit the Philippines after a 6.1 earthquake hit on Monday. According to the United States Geological Survey, the magnitude 6.3 earthquake registered on the island of Samar in the central Philippines. So far, we know that the death toll sits at 16 people dead, 81 injured, and 14 remain missing after the two earthquakes. A state of calamity has been put in place which results in price controls on necessities and allows local government units to appropriate calamity funds. Supreme Court justices were divided over whether or not the Trump administration could add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. Lower courts feel as though the Trump administration is overstepping their authority, while the White House feels it is vital to enforce voting rights. Conservatives seem to lean toward allowing the citizenship question. Four liberal justices ask if including a question would reduce the number of respondents to the census. The Constitution requires that every person in the country be counted each decade. And middle school students in Washington could be riding to school in booster seats come next year. Washington State Governor signed a stricter car seat regulation into law requiring children under the age of 12 or shorter than 4 feet 9 inches to ride in a booster seat. Back to you in the studio. Alrighty, thank you, Talon. Walgreens will require tobacco purchasers to be at least 21 years old beginning September 1st. The move comes amid a crackdown by the Food and Drug Administration on Walgreens and other retailers for selling tobacco products to young people. Rival pharmacy CVS stopped selling all tobacco products in its stores in 2014. The FDA says Walgreens is the worst pharmacy for selling tobacco to minors, with 22% of stores not passing inspections on underage sales. Two unlikely corporate giants team up. We'll tell you who and what it means for you when OU Nightly returns. Plus, Trey Bell will be here to give us a look at this week's weather. Trey? Yeah, some, guy, some people in the state this evening may see some scattered thunderstorms. I'll have more information on that coming up after the break. Hey guys, welcome back to OU Nightly. Looking at downtown Norman right now, it's pretty cloudy outside. It's cool as well, but like we mentioned in first weather, if you, once that sun peeks out of the sky a little bit, peeks out of the clouds, you can definitely feel the humidity. Now that humidity is going to fuel some scattered thunderstorms for some people in Oklahoma. We're going to break that down here in a second. It's 62 degrees right now here in Norman with cloudy skies. Dew point at 57, so again, humidity is high and winds are light out of the west northwest. So we do have a marginal risk, a one out of five risk, for some thunderstorms, some few of which could be severe later this evening and into tonight. And as we advance through this, we're going to play this out on future radar. Notice where these storms develop exactly in that green zone. So this is 6 p.m. This evening, a few scattered showers and thunderstorms in southeastern Oklahoma. And as we progress through the evening, these will become more numerous and more widespread. Pretty potent thunderstorms down near the Red River southeast of Ardmore later this evening. And then progressing through the rest of tonight, those th thunderstorms become more numerous and uh, become more widespread. Now notice where they're staying. Notice in first weather that stationary front was positioned right here southeast of I-44. These storms also stay southeast of that stationary front. That's because we're the, that's where those warm temperatures and that high humidity is. And so moving into tomorrow morning, those storms become more numerous. Uh, early tomorrow morning, we could have a few more showers develop along that front. That front's not going to go anywhere as we head into tomorrow morning. But again, southeast of Norman, I'm not expecting any major precipitation amounts here in central Oklahoma. Lows tonight, 51 here in Norman, 49 in Oklahoma City, pretty much 40s and 50s across the state. And then day planner tomorrow, slowly warming into the 60s. Could have some showers by tomorrow evening. Rain chances go up a little bit tomorrow evening. Winds transition from the northeast to the southeast as well and then highs tomorrow sitting in the 60s to 70s 64 in Norman as well as in Oklahoma City warmer off to our northwest and our west uh, in the uh, in the upper 60s and lower 70s so the next two days clouds and cool for tomorrow but on Thursday we start to dry out and then the rest of the forecast looks a little nice uh, we have you know some slight rain chances heading into the early portions of next week but again temperatures are warm but manageable Right. Well, and I know it's getting close to graduation, so senior pictures. Yes. When's going to be the best time to take those? Um, I think later this week we'll have a dry period Friday and Saturday before rain chances begin to increase uh, early into next week. Perfect. Well, that's good to know for everyone else. Of nice. Course. Looks good. Thank you, Trey. No problem. Thanks. Starting in July, it'll be a lot easier to return your Amazon Impulse buys. Retailers announced, uh, retailer Kohl's, that is, announced today that it will begin accepting returns for items purchased on Amazon. 
Customers will be allowed to bring in Amazon eligible items without a box or a label with no additional cost. This is a continuation of a partnership between the two companies that started in 2017. Kohl's stock rose nearly 10 percent this afternoon after the news was announced. And OU honored its top athletes at the Sooner Choice Awards last night. Kelsey Havenitz is here to tell us who took home the hardware. Kelsey? Yeah, Storm and Tori, three-star Sooners earned Athlete of the Year honors. Plus, the season is on the line tonight for the Thunder. A look at their matchup with the Trailblazers when we return with sports. Welcome back to OU Nightly. You already know what time it is. It's time to talk about sports. The Thunder have been struggling so far in the playoffs, and tonight they'll try to stave off elimination in Portland. Despite the fact that they're facing a 3-1 to deficit, Russell Westbrook says that OKC hasn't lost confidence. They'll hit the court with the Trailblazers tonight at 930. And meanwhile, as the NFL draft creeps ever closer, Kyler Murray may no longer be the surefire top pick. James Myers has a scoop. James? Kelsey, for weeks now, Murray has topped everyone's mock draft, but with two days before the show, that may be changing. Let's unpack this. The Cardinals have Josh Rosen at quarterback right now, but likely must trade him if they intend to draft Murray number one. Why? Well, because other NFL teams can lowball Arizona in a trade if the Cardinals have two quarterbacks and desperately need to get rid of one. CBS Sports Insider Pete Prisco reported yesterday that the Cardinals' initial interest in Murray is fading, and they want to move in a different direction. If the Cardinals pass on Murray at pick number one. The next team on the board with an immediate need at QB is the New York Giants, who have the sixth selection. Now let's say they don't draft Murray. The Cincinnati Bengals and Miami Dolphins are among the other teams that may be interested in Kyler. If Murray isn't the top pick, here's my mock draft top five. The monster Nick Bosa at one, Josh Allen at two, Quinton Williams at three, Devin White at four, and Rashawn Gary rounding it out in the five spot. All defense picks for the top five because, hey, they say defense wins championships. Back to you, Kelsey. Thanks, James. Well, Kyler Murray was named Men's Athlete of the Year at the Sooner Choice Awards last night. And the co-male athlete of the year was Joel Moldauer, who won the Nissan Emery Award as the top senior male gymnast in the NCAA. OU softball's, softball's Sydney Romero won Female Athlete of the Year. She leads the Big 12 in batting average, RBIs, and home runs. And sticking to the softball diamond, Giselle Juarez earned her second consecutive Big 12 Pitcher of the Week honor. Juarez was stellar in the series opener against the Longhorns last weekend, striking out 10 batters in her sixth complete game this year. This is the fourth time she's earned this award this season. And from one diamond to the other, OU's baseball team looks forward to a matchup against Wichita State tonight. The Sooners are coming off a series win against Minnesota last weekend, and they hope to ride the momentum into tonight in Wichita. And Sooner fans, stay tuned. Immediately after OU Nightly concludes, we'll rebroadcast the season finale of Sooner Sports Pad at 5. And on to the NFL, marquee edge rusher Frank Clark has a new home. The Seattle Seahawks dealt Clark to the Kansas City Chiefs this morning. And soon after the trade announcement, Clark and the Chiefs agreed to a five-year contract worth over $100 million. And for years, Shaq and Chuck went at it on the court, but now they're going at it with, get ready for it, Water guns. Look at this clip from last night's Inside the NBA show. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. Hey, put the gun down, Chuck. Put the gun down, Chuck. They've had some good moments on that show over the years, but I think this one takes the cake. Oh Honestly, goodness. I've watched that video so many times, and every time I watch it, I can't help but smile so big. You I just, love that video. You didn't There's bring none, right? a water oh, gun. Oh, no, I promise I didn't. Okay. Yeah. Frosties last week, water guns this week, so I'm just glad you left those love at home. It. Good deal. You never know what to expect out of those two. <laughs> the Thunder with a decisive game tonight. We'll be oh, watching yeah. that one for sure. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Kelsey. Right. Well, a fire department in California went viral after an interesting rescue from a storm drain. We'll tell you what you, uh, who or what they saved in just a minute.
Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Taylor Cox at the Update Desk. The State Senate passed a bill today for employees who earn less than $31,000 per year and working over 40 hours a week. The bill requires employees to be paid overtime pay instead of giving comp time and prohibits the requirement that employees use comp time instead of sick leave if they have sick leave available. The bill will now go to Governor Stitt for consideration. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Taylor. A California fire department had their hands full this weekend full of little ducklings. The Alameda County Fire Department found 10 ducklings stuck in a storm drain and rescued them one by one. But don't worry, they weren't alone. Their concerned mother waited patiently until the job was done. The firefighters put the ducklings in a little box and took them over to a nearby pond where their mother was there. Thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. Good evening. Good night. Have a great evening.